Guess what? We're at Same Ash. This is it, huh? Yep. That's the one. Not an SQ2. I don't know how we got an SQ2 20 inch SQ2 head. Makes it makes it sound like one, right? Oh yeah. So what is this? A eight, 10, 12, 14. And while there's no legs on this thing, there is no. Gonna throw on some new heads. Oh, really? There's something else that we got. Oh, okay. Ooh, is that a sonar? Pancake? That's a sonar, a sonar jumble for 70 bucks. You gonna throw that in for free? Uh, nope. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Zach Reeves. That's right. Shout out to He's gonna be so jealous when he sees this thing. Oh, I know. Uh, but check this out. So, Premier uh, Signia Maple. Oh is, my god. <laughs> this is one of the wildest throws. Oh shit, it's the same one. It's literally the exact same on that other one. Yeah, it's the wildest throw I've seen in a long time. Yeah, that thing's beefy. Yeah, it's got three rings on it and everything. But that is a chunky boy show. What's up with all these sonars? <laughs> you just gonna clean out all my sonar stuff? Right? I need a snare for the video, but I happen to know someone with a Benny Greb snare. I'll let you borrow for a video. <laughs> oh, what is, what is, oh. When I was like in middle school, mm -hmm. they had a D drum snare, mm -hmm. but it was actually a group percussion and they put a D drum badge on it and my friend was going to buy it. And the dude was like, don't buy this. Don't buy <laughs> this, this and the sonar jungle snare. The sonar? Yeah, you don't see a lot of sonars yeah, around I, here. Yeah, it's a cool kit. Like. It cleaned up pretty well. I mean, you know. By the way, who the hell pissed on that kid? Uh, that would be... Also, I have a bunch of hardware in my car. Yeah. You're not seeing anything right now. Uh, the price tag for that kid. No, it ain't. All right, appreciate it. It's official. We're finally checking out a sonar, the S Classics Birch. You all have been saying for the longest time that I need to check out a sonar kit. And I'm not gonna lie, if I was walking through the store and saw this kit, I would probably be like, oh cool, a sonar, and then keep walking. The wrap is nothing special, it just looks like black diamond pearl, which I'm sure Sonar called it something different, but they did offer the S Classics with some pretty cool wood veneers. I do appreciate the smaller sizes on this kit, but the depths are kind of weird if you ask me. But since you all have been asking to see one on the channel and these things just do not exist around here, I figure this would be the perfect time to check one out and see what the hype is all about firsthand. Also, I did buy the snare, pretty stoked about that. This kit looks like it's been sitting in a typical grungy Richmond basement for the past like 10 years. There's dust and crud all in the nooks and crannies of the kit. All of the rubber on the kit is pretty dried out. It's not rotten, but still. I don't even want to know what all of these speckles are on the snare drum. Plus there's like a queen size bed shoved inside of the kick drum. So I wouldn't say this is the best purchase I've ever made, but at the same time, I own a sonar now. Also, like an hour after I bought the kit, I got a call from Bryce saying that they found the floor time legs. Apparently, right after I left, the guy that brought in the kit came back and brought in these legs and some other little goodies, so they threw those in. We got a short little boom, got a little boom for a rack, and this cute little sonar X-hat stand. And it even has the weird little tilter thing on it. So here's our first sign of German engineering. We have a hexagonal shaft and we take apart the clutch. Then you'll see a matching hole on the bottom of the clutch, which means when we slide this down the rod, because there's corners on a hexagon, that means that this piece will never loosen up when it's on the shaft. All right, I'm not gonna lie. This kit is a bit more nasty than I thought. If we look in between the head and the shell, you'll see how disgusting it is. So that probably means that this whole drum or the whole kit was this disgusting at some point. Also, do you hear that? There's all sorts of gunk on the rim, which I guess that's tape residue, but it's really annoying to get off. You gotta use the old uh, 
old plastic razor blade to do that. So as much as this sucks, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this entire kit because I don't think I can live with myself knowing that this kit is so disgusting. You know I'm dedicated when I dress to match the drum set. Now here's a little bonus tip if your rubber is all dried out and looks disgusting. Take some grease or oil or something and put it on a rag. Then just work it into the rag so it's not uh, super concentrated. Then you can go around the rubber and kind of lube her up. Get some uh, of them distillates up in there. Then just wipe off all the excess and of course this works best if you take it off the drum. And just like that, she's freshened up. Here's before and after. Now the part I'm least looking forward to, pillows and sheets inside of drums always scare me. Anyone need some studio foam? <laughs> Use drooled on pillows? No thanks. Oh, you can even smell them. It touched me. Uh, there's a comforter in here. I gotta reevaluate what I'm doing with my life right now. By far the worst bass drum I've ever dealt with. It smelled like a moldy locker room. That thing is disgusting and is sitting outside until it airs out. Okay, with all of that out the way, let's take a better look at the kit. So first of all, this kit is birch, Scandinavian birch to be exact. All of the drums have very classy looking veneers on the inside. When you look at sonar veneers, you know it's a sonar because they have a very specific look. I think the kick has been uh, freshened up enough at this point, which this drum is a 9-ply 6mm shell, and all of the toms are 9-ply shells also, but are 5mm, so a bit thinner than the kick. The bearing edges are really thin, I guess is the best way to put it. They have huge inside 45s that almost go to the edge of the shell, and then there's the idiotiest, bittiest little back cut on the outside. I'm pretty sure it's also 45 degrees, but it might be a roundover. It's so small I can't even tell. They also seal the insides of the shell which is a really good thing in my case because if this was bare wood this kick drum would have absorbed all the must of those pillows and blankets and everything. I would have taken it right back to Sam Ash. Yeah it was that bad. I haven't cleaned up the snare yet but this is by far the most interesting drum out of uh, the bunch. It has probably the jangliest jingles I've ever seen. They're like hammered, I guess. Also, do you see the bearing edges on this thing? They're like almost flat. They're very shallow. And then because the shell is so skinny, they had to mount the throw off on the rim. Then there's just enough room to squeak in a butt plate, but you can see that the rims are hitting it, so you can't really tune it too high, I guess. And then there also isn't that much room to fit lugs on this thing. So instead of lugs, they use essentially swivel nuts on the, uh, the snare side. And then to mount it, there's two right angle brackets that mount on with the tension rod. Then this big curved bracket screws onto those brackets and that's how you mount the drum. Now some cool little features I noticed with this kit, first of all on the bass drum, once you uh, get the tension rods installed, the head of the screw is recessed into the claw. So when you have the drum set on the ground like this and it gets moved around a little bit, it's not going to scratch up the heads of those tension rods. Also, the bass drum hoop, if we flip it over, you can see the inside edge has a chamfer on it, which I'm going to assume is to make it sit better on the head somehow. Just finished cleaning up the hardware. This is like a typical ball and socket kind of deal where you loosen this and you can kind of twist it around. But what's cool with these is they actually slide so you can adjust them closer to you or further away. But another thing that's pretty specific to Sonar is their, uh, first of all, their screws, but also their, uh, their lug design. These are T25s, which are actually pretty common here in the US. Not so much for drums though. 
Everyone always talks about how crappy flatheads or slotted screws are, but really they should be talking about how janky Phillips are. Torx are the way to go and are a million times better than a Phillips as far as the screw head to bit interaction goes. And what I mean about the lug design is how the swivel nut is attached to the lug. And thankfully I have a broken one to show you what I mean. This came off of Bryce's snare, he broke it so I helped him fix it, but I guess you could technically say that he busted a nut on his snare. But on the nut itself, you can see these tiny little grooves on the corner. Then on the back of the lug, you can see that there's two pins that go onto the inside of the lug. And on the inside, you can see that those pins intersect the corner. You can see that one all right, but this one is actually broke, which is why the lug uh, stopped working. Those pins would intersect the, uh, the corners of the nut and that's what holds it in place. So if you do bust a swivel nut, you'll have to replace the entire lug since I don't know how you would get those pins out of the lug. Which, wait a minute, you can buy spare lugs for your kit without having to return a broken one in order to get a new one? Other companies should uh, really take notes. Not one specific company, but just, you know, drum companies in general. She's looking sexy. Also, shout out Sam Ash for throwing in a fresh set of batter heads, even though I've unfreshened them at this point. I did leave the stock heads on the Jungle Boy. Also, I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to mic this thing up. I also left the Super Kick on the kick. A lot of people swear by this head, but I've really never played one before. Also, everyone be sure to leave a comment saying thank you, Bryce, because we're borrowing his OG Benny Greb snare. As much as I didn't want to clean this kid and as much as I didn't want to drop $1,600 on this drum set, it was a million times worth it. This kid is easily in the top two best sounding drum sets I've ever played and this kit records like a dream. I'm gonna try something new and post the unmixed drums only version on my second channel so you can hear the raw sound without any processing even though there wasn't too much done in this video. And then over on my Patreon, you can find the drums only mix as well as the drum stem files for this video as well as a bunch of other videos. So last year, I guess, was the year of the DW. So I think this year is the year of the sonar, which means it's time 
for the DWs to get out of this closet to make room for the sonars. 